Hey everybody, it's Bagel here, and I am bringing you another recap from Finland War in their NDL semi-pro season run, uh, remaining undefeated so far. So their first attack that I'm going to show you right here is Ruler. He's bringing the hogs again. So Finland War are pretty known for using hogs in their 10v10s. In a lot of my previous recaps of them, there have been quite a few hog attacks. Um, in this recap, I'm going to try to bring you as many different attack strategies as possible. Um, we did have to cut out a couple of the 10v10s because my attacks have been going really quickly. Uh, my recaps, I've been having to speed up all of the attacks so that I could get everything in the video in a timely manner. This time I'm just highlighting a few of the attacks. So there were a couple more 10v10s, um, that are not going to be included in this recap. I'm really sorry, you guys, um, just to keep everything timely. So as you can see, Ruler here is going with a bit of a suicide queen opener. So she's just got, she's picked off a couple of the buildings down here at the bottom. Um, he didn't want her to go inside the base because there must be a hound in the clan castle. So he's just going to send a golem and the king with a couple more clan castle bullers up here into the base. Um, he used a couple bullers to help pick off the extra buildings on the outside as well. As you can see, they're still working around up top. Um, the kill squad is going in. The hound isn't going to do very much. He poisons the balloon so that it doesn't take out his kill squad. And he wants to try and reach into that defending queen, as well as just carve out a good portion of the base here. So he's got a good amount of defenses. Uh, the king goes straight in there for that defending queen, and then he's safe to send his hogs in. As you can see, he's carved out a really nice path. The hogs have nowhere to go besides on that ring of defenses on the outside. There are still two single inferno towers up, but because he has so many hogs, he's able to overrun this base with no problem. Um, the heal spell placements are also really good. He manages to cover a good amount of splash defense when he does set down his heals, and he did save a poison for these back end skeleton traps on the on the back side. Uh, he managed to save one of his heals as well for this back end wizard tower and expo com combo. Um, I've seen too many attacks where it's just the expo standing somewhere inside the base and they just can't reach it because they keep circling. But luckily, uh, these hogs were able to get everything down. So we're going to speed up the attack here a bit. And I just wanted to reiterate that we are doing fewer of the attacks, um, but just going to focus more on the strategies and the execution that goes on. So that was a nice attack by Ruler. The next attack here is by Mix. So another attack strategy, he's going to do the Suicide Lalo. You can see that he's got the skeleton spells there, so he's not planning to get his heroes and his kill squad inside the base. He just wants to pick off a little area on the outside, and then he'll be able to kind of work his way around with the Lalo portion. So we're going to see where he chooses his entry. He took a long time to get this attack started. It actually waited almost 30 seconds um, before dropping his first troops, which were a bowler and a wizard up at the top. And this bowler is actually very important. It doesn't look like it's doing too much right now, but it did pick off uh, two layers. So he got the barracks on the outside and the mortar on the inside. This means that he got a really cheap funnel. His heroes are going to walk down in the direction he wanted only for six troop space. So he started his king out to do a little bit of tanking for the queen. She's going to take out a wizard tower and an archer tower um, for sure before she kind of makes her way back up around. She'll, she'll get another archer tower. Maybe not the direction he wanted her to go, but she would have gotten stuck on the town hall anyway. So she did her job. She broke that defensive ring so that his hounds and his balloons could work their way around the base in the pathing that he wanted. So he drops his two hounds first and then a lot of balloons, getting those haste spells down early so that he can rush everything in at the same time. Um, when you do rush your stuff in, you tend to overpower the base more um, rather than relying on the pathing. So if there are more balloons in, then the defenses are distracted. They can't uh, focus one group down. Um, but the balloons are still moving. He brought a lot of hastes here. He did have that one rage at the beginning, but with more hastes, so the balloons tend to make it further into the base um, when the defenses are kind of spread out. When the defenses are all compact together, that's when you kind of want to bring the rage spells, but these were not... It wasn't really as crucial for him to bring the rage spells for these balloons. They, they ended up being able to make it around the base um, just fine with the hastes. So as you can see, there's a couple more defenses going down. Just one expo, really, that he has to worry about. But the balloons at the top side take it out, no problem. And then once this bomb tower goes down, it's all just clean up from here. So let's speed up this cleanup. 
and then we'll be able to get into the next attack. So there's something just really satisfying about seeing so many pups and minions converging on the last couple of buildings. Um, it happened here, just a good amount of pups, minions, and balloons converging on that last gold storage. All right, so let's get into the next attack over here. This one is actually using dragons. Yes! I love to watch these dragon attacks. They just kind of sweep across the base, and it's just so satisfying. So this one was done by Sensei. We're going to take a look at how he starts his opener up here. There's a little bit going on on the top, but it got cut off on the screen. So I record these on my phone because they tend to fit uh, the screen better afterwards rather than on my iPad. So I tend to miss some stuff that are on the top or bottom corners. So he set down a few minions uh, to pick off some buildings on the outside because dragons do tend to be a little bit slower. If you can pick off those buildings on the outside, it's a lot better for them um, for cleaning up. He also dropped a bowler on the bottom side to make a funnel so that his king will follow these buildings down because he wants the king and the queen to make a little funnel. He's put his queen on the top side because there are two air defense on the outside there. She gets them both basically for free. The king uh, gets to work his way down, and his job is just to keep the dragons inside the base at the start. Uh, when the dragons fan out, they tend to lose a lot of their power. They they're not really targeting as many defenses that way. So the king is just serving his purpose here. He was also tanking a little bit. He tried to clear the way for these hogs to get this air defense down. They just barely make it. Um, so that was also really nice right there. He managed to get three air defense on this opener. Oh, wait, where, where's the other air defense? Did he get four air defense? Okay, JK, I'm lying. I am so sorry. I just lied to you. But he got four air defenses on this opener. And he brought quite a few balloons with this attack. I've seen a lot of people do the Drag Lalo clone. Not, yeah, the Drag Lalo clone strategy. When you take that clone spell, you just lose a lot of your power. So he brought a couple more balloons in the... Uh, to charge through after the dragons just to get the defenses down in the middle because the dragons they're a bit tankier but because they're so slow the defenses just get to hit them so many times so bringing more loons with the extra rage spells just ensured that he made or he was able to get through the base quicker while his dragons were still alive rather than letting them kind of die out uh, so this always tends to happen with dragon attacks. They'll leave one side of the base up, so they all have to come back around and circle together, and it's just the slowest thing ever. Um, but it was a really nice attack to watch. Uh, just the way the dragons and the balloons moved up through the core together uh, was really nicely planned and well executed. So the next attack we're going to move on to is another 10v10. This one is by Conan. And Conan, he came over to my stream the other day and he was like, you gotta come record, you have to come record, I have a really cool attack. And then while I was recording, he told me, it wasn't actually my idea. So we get to say that uh, this is Conan's attack, but it wasn't his idea. I think he, he still takes all the credit for it though. So what he does here, he starts out with a little queen walk. Um, a couple, well, he uses a, dry, a giant to do a little bit of tanking, so his queen just takes a little bit less DPS. And then he puts a couple wizards on the bottom side for the funnel to make sure that his queen walks in the correct direction. So she is walking up. She manages to take out a couple defenses. She's going to keep doing her thing. The healers are keeping her safe. She actually doubles back. I'm not sure she was meant to come this way. Actually, no, this was a cleanup. It wasn't his attack. She was definitely meant to come this way. It was all planned, all calculated. All right, so uh, he sets down a couple bowlers out here on the outside with some healers on the bottom. Um, so I haven't seen healers on these bowlers since bowlers were first introduced in Town Hall 11s just did bowlers and healers for three stars, spam three stars. But he sets that down and then he pushes his kill squad, which is a bunch of giants with a couple bowlers straight up the middle, jumps them through. And then he's got a couple hogs that he's going to sprinkle in here and there just to help out a little bit with the flanking defenses. But because he's got so many healers and there's a multi-target Inferno, um, his healers are just able to keep everything up because of that uh, Inferno change where they don't affect healing anymore. Um, the healers just did a really nice job here. They weren't... The defenses weren't able to do enough damage to get the bowlers even on the bottom side down. Um, so... Really good exploitation of the base here. 
especially with that back end multi-target Inferno Tower, just knowing the healers would be able to make it through the base. It's a really, really nice attack from Conan. Uh, props to whoever came up with the idea because it wasn't Conan's idea. I just like to tease him a lot. But really, really nicely done. Excellent, excellent um, exploitation of the base right there. We're just going to speed up the rest of this cleanup really quickly. Speed up this cleanup once these bowlers beat through this town hall. All right, so there it was. The healers on the queen actually do end up dying eventually, but by this time it is way too late. There's only two of those collectors up. All right, and then we're going to move on to our last attack over here. Of course, they got an 11 v 11. Of course, it was by Valcon Barbari. VB, sorry if I just mispronounced the first part because I never actually learned how to pronounce it. But Mr. VB over here, he is going to go in with the Queen Charge Buller Witch attack. Um, so what he does down here with the Queen is he makes a little bit of a funnel. So he wants his stuff to go in in a specific way. He uses, he's actually using the Grand Warden as well, just to make sure that his queen stays up. Cause a lot of times with these attacks, uh, the bullers and witches, yeah, they do a good job, but it's really the queen that brings it together. And it, the same was the case in this attack. So what he's done is he's broken in on either side of the base, and then he's gonna put a jump spell down for the center, just to make sure that everything stays spread out and moves through the base together. So he's even got a healer with the bowlers and witches on the top side um, to make sure that they stay up and do as much as they possibly can. The single target Inferno is locked in there. He had to pop his warden ability and then his queen ability straight after just to make sure that she didn't go down. Because again, she is probably the most important uh, thing in these 11 v 11 attempts. Um, so it actually looks like he's going to fail this right now. It looks like it's going to be a one star because everything is circling the town hall. Nothing is going in there. He's going to have a clutch witch um, that comes back around. But as you can see, everything is kind of pushing down the sides. He still has hope. He's still trying. He's got the heal spell up on the top side with that group of bowlers and witches. And then his queen and his warden are down here on the bottom side. He's got a rage because he wants to get those healers in there to possibly save the queen. She just barely almost went down. And as you can see, next to the town hall, one of the witches managed to break through. Her skeletons take out the Tesla. And then they're just going to be on the corner of the town hall compartment for the longest time until they make it in there. Um, he's got a, an archer down here trying to help out. But again, it's... There's very, very little left up. The queen does have healers, so she is pretty safe. A cannon and a wizard tower aren't going to take her out. It's just time at this point. So the queen doubles back to the town hall, and then she has to come back around here and clean up the last bit of these buildings. But it he made it through. It managed to work out because he prioritized that queen. So it was a really nice job to Finland War taking down Pinoy Violator MP, who are also a, an amazing clan, really solid opponents, but still managing to stay undefeated.